Hello, welcome back to the studio. Uh, still working on those black and white flowers by Manet. Um, I've done so far five. Uh, I've, I don't think I've, I've taped all of them. Um, it's always the same. It's always the same. You know, I mean, it's um, it's uh, once again, it's about training with um, working with clarity. So, uh, you know, trying to understand what are the value of the colors. So what's a, what's a yellow versus an orange versus a red versus a, a green versus a blue and try to scale them into uh, a gray scale from, from white to black or the other way around and be able to see them not as colors, but also as value, as contrast, as clarity. There's, there's three things that define a color. There's the, uh, the tint, clarity, and saturation. Uh, tint is red, orange, green, whatever, on, on the wheel of color where they are located. Um, tint, uh, clarity. Clarity is, of course, if they lighter or darker, knowing that most of the time a yellow is going to be lighter than the violet. You have really light violet. Uh, it's really difficult to have a dark yellow dark yellow often turn into a green uh, and then you have saturation saturation means is the color close to gray or maximum saturation you cannot get more saturation than the pigment you have you can always desaturate a color but you cannot resaturate a color that means that if you don't have the real orange or the real red on your palette there's no way you can make it by mixing colors each time you mix two colors you desaturate them by is the way it is. Uh, I didn't. I didn't make the the, the 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 chemistry. So what I mean by that is that as soon as you mix two colors, even if they are wheel to saturated color, orange and red, for example, we are pretty close on the wheel of color. Each as soon as you're going to mix them, you're going to obtain a color that is on the line between those two colors. And I will do a color theory. Um, the same that means you, we're going to desaturate those colors. We're going to lose a little bit of saturation of of uh, um, of power. Per se. Okay, so uh, let's start again with that. So you know the, jeez, I'm still seeing so that's so annoying. Uh, once you notice something you do permanently, it's really, really frustrating, but anyway. Um, I'm starting again with uh, black and white. So what I'm planning to do at some point in time is to do also the same thing, but with colors. So I will use only red and white, or blue and white. And, and I love to work monochromatic like this. What's interesting about working with um, the red and the blue is that the red is not completely black. I mean, it's, when it comes to clarity, the red is lighter than black. So instead of working from zero to 100, like we're working with black and white, we're gonna work from zero to 60, 70, depending on the red we're using. What I mean by that, if you take a black and white photo of your red, you're going to get a, a, a grade of gray, and that gray is going to be 70%, 80% close to the, the black. So I'm going to add a little bit of white, just not to say that I'm working with pure black. So now you know I'm cleaning a little bit my brush on the, on the corner. It's a little thing I, don't, I do, I don't know. It just... I'm just going to draw quickly the outline the the, the 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 flowers. The vase. We have a little flower here with the Okay, and now I can start. So you remember, at the beginning, I'm using quite a lot of liquid. It's going to help to block the paper. And it just makes the painting smoother, you know, like a, it feels better on the brush. So the reason why the paper doesn't, you know, if I was using water-based, like, for example, you can say, oh, I want to do the same exercise with acrylic. The problem with acrylic, it's water-based, and water-based techniques are going to dissolve the glue that is in the paper. So as a reaction, we're going to have the paper that's going to do waves, you know, like it's going to be... Bzz. The great thing about working with oil on paper is that the paper remains perfectly flat. And I love that. I think there's something a little bit magical about it. It's just a, a chemical thing between the glue of the paper and the uh, turpentine. By the way, you can try it. It's pretty fascinating as well. If you put turpentine on paper and you let it dry, uh, 
the, the, the paper dry completely clear, the turpentine completely disappear. So I'm just doing a quick mise en place, meaning that I'm just putting the thing pretty quickly. I don't try to give too much details. I can even use some liquid with uh, black just to Switching of brushes, getting a smaller brush. Still working on the kind of gray paper tone. You know, the reason I'm doing a, the gray paper tone as well is because when I take off the tape, I like the, the relationship between the, the paper, the side of the paper and the, the colors I'm putting on it. So there was, you know, there was a big debate at some point on, I don't know if it was online on social media or whatever, uh, about is black and white a color? Is black a color? Uh, I'm not even going to get there, really. I will just simply say yes, it's a, it's a color. But black is a color. Black is actually... So a surface is defined by the color it's reflecting. So if, if a paper is blue, it's because it's reflecting only the blue colors. It's absorbed all the other colors. So black is just a color, a surface, that absorbs all the other colors. I talk about... Uh, um, Anish Kapoor, in one of my, um, one of the old videos, I mean, not all, but, you know, not, not obviously not on this one. So Anish Kapoor is a really famous uh, um, English artist. I mean, he's, you can hear his name. So he is from India. Um, and he bought the, the blackest black ever made. So this thing is so black that um, you don't even see, I mean, it doesn't reflect anything, it's pure black. And so it was created by a company, I don't remember the detail exactly, but I know he bought it and now he's the only one in the world who can use it. It's kind of weird, right, when you say, oh, I'm going to buy a color. It's like I'm buying yellow, nobody else can use yellow anymore. Angle would have been pissed. I think it's weird to own a color. So you see, usually it's funny. Um, usually I start with uh, the, the there, and this time I started with the vase. So you see, there's no there's no rule. Just do as you wish. I don't know if you can paint with me, like you know, like uh, um, I don't really know what's going to be the approach of people of. My tutorial, if someone's going to do a, a little painting as I'm, I'm, as I'm painting, I think it's pretty difficult because I'm, I'm working pretty fast. So maybe the best thing to do is to watch the video. You know, they're not, those videos are not long. They're like 15, 20 minutes. And um, maybe more, but not that much. And then after you can work and do your own thing. Uh, I think that might be easier for you guys than, than to try to paint as I am painting because you're not going to be able to watch what I'm doing, watch the, the, the image, the original image, plus watching the, what you're painting and so on. I think that's just uh, 
unless you have several eyes and several hands. And so maybe I should send those tutorials to the extraterrestrial. Just tell me how you do it, and uh, you know you can send me some emails and telling me, give me feedback. You know, I mean, of course you can pause the video. That's that's actually the great thing about videos is that you know we can always pause them and go have a coffee or a beer or a glass of wine and come back. As you can tell, I don't have a glass of wine or anything. Uh, I said it already uh, over and over again, but I'm going to say it again because there's some, uh, I mean, so I learned, you know, I was in the studio and the teacher was pretty much saying the same thing all the time and uh, still it took me years to understand. Uh, you know, suffering in a painting, what I mean by suffering is that like if you really struggle to, struggle to do a painting, the viewer is going to see it. If the viewers, I mean, when I say struggling, I mean like, like sweating. Um, the viewer is going to accompany you on your journey to painting if you're having fun. Um, there's not a lot of people who want to travel with someone else if the trip's going to be absolutely awful, sweaty, and uh, a struggle. It's kind of a cliche what I'm saying, but it's actually true. You know, um, I think... And it doesn't mean that you need to paint only happy subjects. You know, you don't need to paint only happy dogs and happy cats and happy bears and all those things that make us happy on social media. You can paint something really sad, but still, I think it's important to um, feel the. And I mean, it's kind of strange what I'm going to say because how can you paint something like something sad and so on and having pleasure? The action of painting is, I think, something where you should have. A little bit, and, and when I say a little bit, it's maybe more than a little bit. Just you know, some some pleasure. Make pe make people feel you love what you're doing. If you can do that, people will follow you. They will say, you know, they will look at your work and and follow your lead. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I feel, you know, I feel like it's, uh, it's like in music, you know, I mean, I'm, I've never been that much attracted by artists, like, like, for example, guitar players, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Pink Floyd or things like this, but I don't feel like when they play, it's, they try to impress me. I don't feel like they, they're just trying to prove me how good they are at the guitar, talking about David Gilmour. Um, there, are some, there are some guitar player. I used to play the guitar a little bit, but you know, I mean, I was not necessarily very bad at it, but I didn't have enough time. So, because you know, it's like painting, playing guitar and so on, it's, it's, it's a commitment. And so, um, I've never been really attracted by musicians that try to impress me with their skills. I know some people are. They are more, um, I would say, technically oriented. But for me, it has always been the, the soul, the, the energy, the kindness, the belief of what I'm doing is more important than me. And it's why the relationship with God, and don't make me wrong, I'm not, uh, I'm not someone who's going to try to bring you into some, going to church and so on. It's just something personal. If you, if you go, go. But 
I'm not going to say you have to go or something like this because it's absolutely not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just like there's a relationship with something higher than us, you know, something we feel like uh, we're not that important. And uh, I think that's the best way to deliver a message of love. And what we're trying to do through paintings is, is a love. Um, it's almost like a love affair. You know, we're trying to say to people, look at that, how beautiful it is. And I'm going to try to explain to you how beautiful it is by painting it. And if I do a pretty good job, you're going to see the beauty. So I'm almost like a, a revelator, like, a, like an initiator, like someone who's going to say, you know, trust me, hold my hand. And I'm going to lead you on the path of beauty through colors. And I'm going to try to make you see things that... Uh, I see and I want to share with you. And I think that's really the, the main thing. So I did, you know, my, my, my vase is maybe a bit too, not too long enough. I'm just gonna make that a little bit higher, that should do it. Um, this exercise is not about drawing. You know, you can separate the exercise. We don't need to do everything at once. This one is more about getting the ambience, getting the mood, getting the, the feeling of those flowers and understanding the relationship between the, you know, the, the grays and the, the white and the lighter colors and so on. So when we're going to switch to colors, that's going to help us tremendously to judge, to evaluate our colors. So don't worry if it's not perfect, if it's not like, a, you know, you don't have a, all the, the little relationship, details and so on, because that's not the point. This one is more about um, just evaluating the colors and understanding the, understanding the chaos as well, you know, like what it means for the brushwork to work together and so, so far I've been working with that large brush. I mean, they were large at the beginning and now they're starting to be really like, you know, there's about 30% of the brush that is left. So, yes, when he was young, he was a large brush, but now he's an old brush. I used to have another one I like, but I think he's, um, no, it's this one. Same thing, this one is starting being, he has a story behind him. Sometimes I wish the brush could testify about all the, the painting they've done. So you see, there's a difference between this flower, this one that is more like, you know, little pixels of colors of white, little dots and so on, and this one that is more, um, you know, the petals. So I'll try to get that as well. That's why it's important to change up the scale of brush because some brush cannot give you that feeling. But on the other hand, there's the large brush will give you other feeling. So try also to understand what are the specificity of your tools? Uh, I said it already, but um, not in that video, I'm not sure. Try to see, I mean, the, the vase is, is absolutely an abstract landscape. You know, there's nothing really to... Um, There's nothing really to structurally, there's no drawing per se. So it's why it's interesting to do something like this also for on the drawing point of view. So you have to force yourself to paint something without understanding what it is because there's no structure. Like if you paint a, an egg, an egg has a structure, it's woof. that thing here is chaos, total chaos. And I want you to paint it like, like chaos because that's going to help you a lot when you're going to transfer to something more figurative, more with a structure, to see the structure with a different, uh, um, a different vision, a different point of view, and you're not going to see only the structure, you're going to see, you're going to see also what makes the, stru the structure.
It's going to help you for the skin tones, for example. It's going to help you for everything where your brain is going to scream in your ear, the grass is green, well, it's not. The grass color depends on what's around the grass. But if you listen to your brain, it's going to say it's green. And if you paint it green, it's not going to work. And then you're going to feel what's wrong. It's because you didn't see what you, you didn't paint what you see, you paint what you know. You know, if I could paint something like I've never seen it before, sometimes it might help actually, you know, to, to imagine I'm an extraterrestrial, I'm coming on the planet Earth and I need to go back to my planet with a sketchbook and explain to my fellows, extraterrestrial, what I saw. Like for example, I saw a, an animal, it has horn on his head and it's mowing. How does it look like? And then you have to paint a cow. And just try to be surprised by what you paint. The result will come to you, not the way around. What I mean by that is um, the painting needs to appear. And then if you do that, then you're going to see, you're going to be surprised because you're going to end up doing something. And at the end, you look at it and say, wow, wow, that looks like that. Yeah, because you didn't try to make it. You just let it flow for you. Okay. So you see, if I take the, the other one I've done just earlier and put it side by side, you see the series starts looking interesting. My favorite moment. It, re it reminds me of, there was this amazing show I really love on TV. Um, and <clears throat> they were fixing houses for people, you know, people in need. They were coming, they were sending them in vacation and then they were remodeling the house. And at the end they were saying, move that bus, move that bus. You know which one I'm talking about? It's a little bit the same, you know, move that bus, move that bus. What I like as well is that the painting, I love the reflection, you know, I mean, the, the painting is a bit shiny, a bit satin, a bit, I just love it. I just love the, the rendering of the, those, those effects of black and white and so on. I think it's just a, a really beautiful thing. Let's do another one. Thank you. <laughs>